Over the next few lectures, we're going to be talking about how you can write component tests and my philosophy around component testing. In this particular series, we're going to be using Cypress, but these ideas can really apply to any different framework or testing tool that you're using. We're going to be using a real world application, and this is something I created for a course a little while ago, and it does have sufficient complexity to give us some fairly interesting examples. It's a very simple blogging application, but it is powered by a real backend, so we're going to have to figure out how to deal with things like API requests, authentication, and authorization. We can go ahead and filter our blogs using these posts up here. We can also go ahead and sign up and sign in, and there's going to be some other complex functionality we cover as we go, including a real-time markdown editor. We'll get to that when we do, but for now, let's just go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is just proceed down all of the components folder and write a test for every single one with the goal of getting 100% test coverage. We're going to start off simple with our components and then we're going to also see how you can write some tests for things like your views and this is going to let us deal with things like routes, authentication and authorization as well. We're also going to see what's a good fit for a component test and what's a good fit for something like an end-to-end -end test. Let's go ahead now and get started, starting with the form input component. Just to give you an idea of what this component does, if I go ahead and sign up, we have these form inputs, and that is going to be the form input component. It is going to have validation, so we're going to have to make sure that is working correctly as well. Let's start off by creating our very first test, and I'm going to do that inside of a directory called tests. I like to keep all of my tests in the same directory. I'm going to create a new one called form inputscits and we are using the Sci extension just to show this is going to be a Cypress test and so they don't get confused with other testing frameworks like Jest or something like that. Finally, we need to go ahead and get our types. So I'm going to go ahead and say reference types is just equal to Cypress. We're going to start off with the test suite and I'm going to call this one form input for now just to get something working. And then we'll start talking a little bit more about the different tests we need to write. For now, let's just go ahead and get something rendering. Let's go ahead now and import the correct component. I'm going to grab my form input and that one is going to come from that file, which is just one level up, form input.view. Since we're using view, we're going to go ahead and import the correct adapter as well. And that is going to come from Cypress view. If you're using React, you can go ahead and grab React as well. Now that we have that, let's see if we can get something rendering. I'm going to start off with mount and pass in my form input component. And we're going to have to pass in some props as well. This component takes the several props. We're going to pass in the name, model value, status, and type. These are all going to be strings except the status. This one's going to either be valid, true or false, and we can have an error message optionally as well. So the first thing we're going to do is pass in our props. I'm going to start off with a name of let's say username. We're also going to have our model value. I'm just going to start off with my name. Uh, we're going to have the type, which is just going to be text. And finally, we're going to have the status. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say valid is true. If we've done everything correctly, this should hopefully be working. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and launch, launch Cypress with npx Cypress open. I've already configured this. Uh, it's pretty easy to configure those, so uh, you can go ahead and configure it in your project as well. Now that we've launched that, if we go ahead and click on our test, we can see everything is working. And I'm just going to make this a bit smaller so you can see what is going on. So now that we've done that, we have our component rendering exactly what I was expecting. The next thing we need to do is think a little bit about what we might like to test here. And before we do that, let's talk a little bit more about our testing philosophy. So when you test a normal function, it might look something like this. Let's say we have the classic add function, which takes a and b, then we're just going to return a plus b. When I test components, I like to think about everything in terms of inputs and outputs. In the case of this function, the input would be A and B. And we need to consider things like the happy path or the valid case, for example, passing in numbers. We also might want to consider things like passing in junk data or if these are undefined. In terms of outputs, we only have one output. It is going to be the return value. We don't really care about how this implementation works. We just care that based on some given inputs, we get the correct output. The same uh, functionality or the same philosophy can be applied to functions and components. So let's say we have our form input. In this case, the, the parameters or the arguments are basically going to be our props. So things like the name and like the status. Based on these inputs, we're going to have some given output. Our function is not really going to have, or our component is not going to have a return value. What it is going to do instead is render to the DOM 
So this is kind of going to be our output, whatever is rendered in the document. Finally, with a component, there is one other way to have an input or an argument. As well as having props, we're also going to have user events. So things like clicking and typing. So we're going to consider those as well. And based on this, we should be able to write some pretty good tests. So let's go ahead and give that one a try now. The first thing we're going to do is write an assertion based on our input. So if the status is valid, I'm going to assert that the error message is not rendered. If we go ahead and have a look at our component, we can see how that is set up. If I scroll down to the bottom, we have this v if here. Uh, let me just go ahead and make this one a separate tab so you can see what is going on. If we scroll down here, we have v if, and this is the conditional of the controls whether the error message is rendered or not. So we can basically assert whether this is rendered or not, and that's going to give us the correct output. Let's go ahead and write that assertion. There are a few different ways we could do this. I'm going to start off simple by saying sci.get. Going to go ahead and grab that, that class. I'm just going to say is danger for now. And then we're going to assert that it does not exist in the DOM. So I can just say should not exist. Now let's go ahead now and give this one a try. And that test is still passing. Whenever I write a test that passes the very first time, I like to make it fail as well, just to make sure it's failing for the correct reasons. Uh, and in this case, it is failing. So that's exactly what I was expecting. Finally, let's go ahead and fix it up. <laughs> there we go. The next thing we're going to do is talk a little bit about what selector we'd like to use. I prefer not to use CSS selectors like this. I feel like these are very brittle and tend to be used for things like styling. There are a few different options for things we can use here. Historically, I used to use data test ID quite a bit, but I'm now told there's actually a better practice and that's to use things like accessibility selectors. So for example, we can go ahead and use the role selector and this is going to be an alert type since we're alerting the user that an error has occurred. This is going to be better for accessibility and it's a good habit to get into. So now I'm going to go ahead and update my assertion as well. Instead of saying sci get is danger, we're going to assert on the role and that is equal to alert. If we save this off, everything is still passing as expected. The next thing we're going to do is write the opposite test. Instead of rendering uh, or not rendering an error, we are going to render an error. So the first thing we should do is update our description. I'm going to say it does not render an error when valid. The next test is going to be very similar. So I'm going to copy and paste. Uh, eventually we're going to eliminate this copy paste, but for now let's just get something passing. And I'm going to say it does render an error when invalid. If we go ahead now and change this to be false. Uh, we should in fact see that error. And this test is going to fail at first. If we save this one off, we do have one failing test and it is going to fail. As I continue development, I like to use if.only just to focus on one test. And all we need to do is reverse this condition and that is going to pass. The next thing I'd like to do is assert the error message is actually rendered here. Although the role is being rendered, I can't actually see what is wrong. So let's go ahead and update our props as well. I'm going to come up here and leave this one uh, as it is, but down here we're going to have an error message inside of message and I'm just going to go ahead and say invalid. And now invalid is going to be rendered. Finally, I'm going to update my assertion. Of course, this is going to exist, but it should also contain some text. So we can say should contain text. And in this case, it's going to contain invalid. Let's go ahead and run it. That is going to pass. Again, I'm just going to make sure this one fails. Ah, it's actually going to pass because that was correct. <laughs> Let's go ahead and make it definitely fail. And that is going to fail. Finally, these two assertions are a little bit uh, meaningless. I can go ahead and delete the first one because this implies the existence of the alert uh, existing in the first place. This is still passing. So we've made some pretty good improvements here. We have a bit of test coverage, but I think we can do better. Firstly, we haven't actually got any interaction testing. We do know that it does render the correct state, but we don't know that if I go ahead and delete this, is this going to correctly update? And in fact, it doesn't. So this is not really working as you would expect. This lecture is already getting pretty long though, so what we're going to do in the next lecture is go ahead, make a refactor, and try to improve our test a little bit.